Kareem. Yes, some boss. Greetings, greetings. Bless up, bless up. <laughs> uh, welcome to the Music Hacks Network. Definitely, it's a pleasure to be on, you know, to uh, to share knowledge, you know, because well, that was my, trust me, that's the best thing, uh, wisdom and knowledge, you know. It's good when it's passed on from generation to generation, even now I'm still attaining knowledge. And it's... Uh, uh, it's just prudent of me to just share what I know to others, you know. Definitely. It make a difference. All right, Karim, so what has been going on with you? I haven't seen you in a long, long time. Last time I saw you was when we were playing for Donovan Scott in in Mandeville. Yeah. In in that in that great band. <laughs> uh yeah, I uh Memories was as you mentioned that you know we're playing amongst um great talented musicians, dedicated and very committed. Um I've been doing good right now. I currently reside in the Cayman Islands, um, whereas I'm a teacher here and also a performer, you know. So just do just doing what I know to do best and fulfill the purpose, you know. Uh, God has given me the gift, you know. I've been playing for various um artists here locally. Um, both um, gospel and even R&B singers, you know, um, a person that I've been in in contact with and playing for. He's also my friend right here, so Mike, you know, beautiful, um, great saxophonist, veteran, you know, and um, been playing for another saxophonist here, Dennis Carbo, talented from Cuba. Uh, okay. Yeah. So that's it, you know, Rick Erland is a, is a list of them, you know, <laughs> but <laughs> can't complain, you know. Awesome. Awesome. All right. Before we actually go into your presentation, um, Kareem, I, I'm just going to ask you a few questions so our patrons, our viewers and subscribers can get to, to know Kareem some more. All right, um, Karim, can you remember how long you have been actually playing uh, music? I said from uh, a young age of about um, 11, you know, when I introduced it and tell you the truth, you know, I was introduced by my parents, as no musician can say here. And the funny thing about it, while well, being in church, that's where I started off. Um, I've never went around an instrument in my life, never. Never show an mm -hmm. interest of all in any instrument and that's what they got home from school and mom was up on where mommy says that's your keyboard you know i want that class okay. as well still you know it end up but it's just really my calling you know sometimes we run from it but we have to adhere to the master call you know when you fulfill so from a young age of um 11 there about i started my mm. musical journey okay all right, so what are some of the things that you have actually practiced over the year to, to shape your, your, your craft? Ah, uh, practice. Different music, um, different variety, because I listen to different um, musicians, and over the years, uh, it, it changes. You know, the style changes. Uh, I usually listen to a lot of uh, Doobie Powell, um, you know, that kind of feel I do record different. Mm -hmm. You know, I listen to whether it's jazz, whether it's pop. Right now, I listen to a lot of like salsa, uh, you know, Spanish movie, music, you know. Uh, it's because where I am, and I share the guys that it's, it's different, you know, different from Jamaica totally. Mm -hmm. It's an experience where as you have to be well rounded as possible. You know, uh, at one point I felt like Charlie Parker. What? <laughs> <laughs> at one point, but this time without, uh, I would say without. With mm -hmm. even one of the one of the one of the musicians I play with, um, uh, telling me that you know, Sakari, we need for us, you know, learn some of the music here, and I just come off on the map for a couple months, don't play nowhere, spend mm -hmm. time mastering because because of a different nationality. 
and when we play music as a universal language um, we have to ensure that each person that we play for um, yeah a time with the music was well spent right you know even sometimes they might not come to you and say they enjoy you know so if Spanish tumbaya, salsa, funk, uh, you name it, gospel, reggae, definitely, you know, can't live for the Jamaican roots. So, True. so I've been listening to a lot of persons, you know, um, Quinnell, uh, Robert, that's for a beast, you know, Glenn Gibson, I can't remember, when we listen to that, I don't want to rub my head, yeah, you know. Mm -hmm. But even though um, sometimes I probably not at their level, to be honest, listening is a key part of music for me more than anything. As I say, I name it, name, I name it um, sight and ear because I listen more. Sometimes I find myself listen more than I even play. Listen for something new. Listen for something even new, and it take a while from before I even try. Um, play it and listen over and over consciously unconsciously you know so yes sir chris all right so um i've heard quite a few influences in your in your conversation a while ago um do be among other persons and i'm sure all of them they have a different style to their playing but you listening to all of these people now how have you um taking their style and use it to be your own what's the process has been like oh so the process is is like picking from each you know it's not everything that then gets to play i i want to play sometimes i i like it but i don't love it but then um, could I replace something? Could I replace something? I'm saying, yo, that I like that. I want that to be in part of my flavor, you know, in, in when I play, you know. And, and if I listen to Adobe, it just teach me a little bit of the harmony. So there's a, I pick from each person to shape. But at the end of the day, there's a time, there's a time and place for everything. Yeah, so even yes. though I pick from everybody, um, you have to know what to play and where, or where to play, play or what. Mm -hmm. You know. All right. Um, what would you say your your favorite style of music is to play? To play. <laughs> honestly, I don't know. You know. Honestly, honestly, I don't think I'm a favorite yet. I don't think I'm a favorite yet, because mm -hmm. then sometimes when I lock into something. And I find something really interesting. I'm like, different, because I really love different. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, I attempt it. But right now, nothing specific, because I um, I try to be as best to play everything to the fullest of my ability. Even experiment. Sometimes experiment when we should even try experiment. Mm -hmm. You know, just feel something like, you know, something just click. You hear mm -hmm. it sometimes, sometimes you do it, sometimes we can't produce, but you just hear it tonight and not it. So I don't have a specific style. You know, definitely go for it, just love gospel. You know, as long as I feel I'm, I'm, I, the feel of the music, whatever I'm interpreting, and whatever what you, your listeners are interpret what they're playing, once that a groove and everything just a cook, I, I'm just fine with it. Mm -hmm. You know? All right. Um, who are some of the persons that you have actually worked with, artists, and you can mention some of the bands as well? Bands, ah. Um, we go, when it comes to artists, I, I'm a freelance musician, you know. I, um, as you know, I've mentioned, I usually play for Don River. Um, in Jamaica, I usually play in a, a Seb Adventist band in Kingston called Key Influence. Um, talented musicians were there too. Um, Alongside, I played with audio playing in that, that band also. Uh, I, played, I played for, I think, I don't know, there's a list of them. I can't even pick point. Whether here, 
I just said Rico here um, from Jamaica. I played for Jewel Osborne. Uh, I was playing for Curious. I played for Curious Sales. Uh, I know several artists. Cause you know I just mm. freelance. Okay. Um, how, how do you find the, the culture in terms comparing the culture of Jamaican music as to that of the, the, the Cayman type of music? How have you adapted to, to that new culture? Uh, I, I think I adopted well. You know, I think I adopted well because um, one of the factors about me and which every musician should have for, for growth is to, 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 to be receptive and their culture of music, they have a specific, a specific style because of the, the various nationality. Now, trust me, you would have a, a, a reggae show, a uh, place of reggae music, like a gig or something, a pack. You have Latin, a pack. You know, so I have put my hand in every much in basket. I will master all the genres. But as much as I, I put my hands in different genres, because at the end of the day, as a job um, for music, entertainment, even for the pleasure, um, make sure I can do as best as possible. Even the other day, I was introduced to uh, music from Greece. Trust me, I didn't, I've never listened to music from Greece before. Oh. Yeah, and 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 um, uh, up, I stand up, up to uh, we call it upscale. Um, hotel manager came to me and some guys want us to play like Greece music. I'm saying Greece music, and I was like, when I'm listening to like Chris, I was like, wow, different experience. You know, mm -hmm. I had to condition my mind to, 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 when I listen, I try to listen to details. What is the concept of the music? What is the pattern of the music? Some core current characteristic about the music, you know, so. <laughs> That's what it's been like in terms of the different genres and the culture here. Like, if you come here, anybody choose to come here as a musician, don't come with a mindset of that is narrow to the one focus on this type of music. I know. Mm. Because okay. then opportunities will come and you have to be ready. If you're not ready, if you're not prepared, you're just going to get left. You won't be considered. You just have to have that mindset because of the, the cultural diversity, as mentioned. The music, the genres varies. Okay, cool. All right, Sam, um, I, I know of a fact that you have been formally trained. Yeah. All right. Um, what has influenced um, all of that? My foundation teacher was Miss, Miss Woodburn, was my teacher. Um, she, she taught me the first teacher I've ever had, whereas she taught me both to play, to, to read music and also try to listen and play back what you hear or follow, you know, melodies. Um, Miss McNamee is the one. Um, it's from uh, Miss Davison is the one person. So and this was at Edna Manley? This was when I was at Edna Manley. Okay. Uh, and friends also, um, Ardeal, you know, playing with him, you know, it give a push and give a different light to a lot of things, you know, big respect to my boss, you know. Um, even we're playing with band with you, Chris, you know, no joke. Because not <laughs> just the persons that we listen on YouTube, we should let have an influence over us. And a lot of musicians, right. Realize that you know, as a as we are a family, as one, um, I tend to even from persons who we can I would consider I'm better than I listen to, and try to learn from them, you know, and try and make sense over everything. So those are like the little things, friends, teachers, whether YouTube, you know, the different uh, musicians I listen online. So, yeah, man. Mm -hmm. All right. Um. Do you think it's a very important question though, because um I know there are many persons who, out there who will think otherwise. Um in terms of some people are of the belief that 
being self-taught is much better than being formally trained. Um, hmm. Which do you think is more important? Um, this is what happened. I think both are very important. And then, and reason being, being self-taught, you can get wrong information. When you're formally trained, you get the information you need. And then if some of the information you, you get, you know, being formally trained, you can even help teach yourself and, re and, and like learn things. As we have YouTube and all of that, because I realize that even with my students that I teach here, um, they could go on YouTube and learn. But I've, go, go, I've been on YouTube channels and a lot of music can testify to that, even you, Chris, I'm back here. And I realized that it's not everything is accurate. Mm -hmm. It's not every time yes. somebody said this note is that note, they're accurate. Sometimes you hear it in their video themselves, oh, no, no. So even if you spend time learning things online, you have to be careful. If you're not far, maybe if you don't have the knowledge, be careful what you dig for. Mm -hmm. You see, and if at the same time, while you learn to play the, your instrument, um, some things you'll know, you will know, when you learn practically, but theorize, they don't know what, what it is. You can't apply. Because mm -hmm. there's a lot of times when I play, you know, spend time learning songs and stuff like I don't know what it is. I play a card, I'm like, yo, what is this? It's good, nice, sweet. But if I wasn't formally trained with theory plus the, um, principal instrument tutoring, then I won't be able to identify that. So both actually come hand in hand. You know, but you have to be careful if, if you're if you're if you're gonna be self-taught, you have to be very careful. You know? You know, you have, you have actually we are learn we are learned from you have to like sometimes we'll scrutinize the knowledge, you know, meticulously in our way to make sure say your accuracy. You know, okay, don't want to go off track. All right, um just about two more questions, um, Karim, and then I'll let you go into your presentation. Um, I would like to know what's there in the future for you uh, when we see you in the next five years. <laughs> what exactly will we um, be seeing from Karim Samuels? Oh, uh, be seen from the next five years. Five years time, I, I basically where I reside, um, I plan to set a foundation here, you know, for me and my family because right now, not because I know I'm married, so life different. But Congrats, bro. I respect, man. So, but it's a much different that, you know, or if I say no, practice and whatever, you know, I said, be careful you're married, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Uh. So, so, so I, I'm here. I'm, I'm happy. As long as I'm happy, you know, everybody have been calling. If it's, if it's, if it's somebody called me on a tour or whatever, yeah, cool. Because they have a couple of artists here that are uh, approach me about tour, but then we're waiting until see because based on the condition right now and the, the border restrictions. Thank God that we are border restrictions restrictions here. You know, the government did did a great job. I must, you know, shout out the Cayman Islands government, big up Jamaica government still. You know, um, we are COVID free for persons who don't know. We don't wear masks, we're back to school. We have been like this since last year, September. So we still gig, we still have in our shows, you know. Everything's still very much normal day to day life. You know, if anybody is, is here with COVID, you know, it, they are they're in quarantine because once you get here, you don't go you don't mix and mingle, you know. There are station places that you go and you don't move. But right now we're good, you know. Mm. So five years from now, wherever the Lord says, tell the truth. I don't want to. Mm. I don't. Want, I, I have objective, but the Lord have better plans, probably higher than mine. All right, Karim, it was a pleasure um, sharing with you for those couple of minutes, um, getting to know you better, so our patrons can understand who is Karim. Samuels, welcome to all the persons who are joining us on Zoom. All right, and also the persons who are viewing on YouTube. Karim brought along a guest 
And before they play, I'm going to ask him to introduce um, his guest first. I'm going to put you center stage, Kareem. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, I present to you Mr. Kareem Samuels. All right, I must, uh, everybody, this is Mike, um, saxophonist, you know, another person that I have respected, you know. I met here, <laughs> talented, I would say young man, but yeah, talented man. <laughs> very, very young man. <laughs> very young man. <laughs> So, um, so we're, as, as, as this body saw the topic, you know, about music, you know, sight and hear, and, and also look at it as that the eye and the ear, you know, because it works, um, it works hand in hand, you know, to make you a more diverse musician. And what is sight reading, you know, actually just playing, you know, playing music by sight, what we see on a piece of score, um, especially if it's not being seen before. Because um, a lot of person look at sight reading as somebody just, well, well, see the piece over and over and play. You know, I see sight reading as if it's the first time, the first time you're seeing, seeing the music. And what would I encourage everybody when it comes to sight reading is Whatever you're seeing, you understand the theory basics of all the letters that is on the key and how it works on the staff is key. Sometimes we don't need to we don't need to say A is just A. 
understand the theory basis of where's A on the staff, you know, and, and the easier way is, um, is by intervals. If you spend day to day on a music sheet, trust me, if you spend day to day on a music sheet, understanding the different letters and how it works, it's easier sometimes to play. Why it easier sometimes to play? Because if you keep your, if your brain is, is, is program away, if you see something over and over consistently, you know, you know, muscle memory kicks in. So when we learn like where medicine is on the staff, and we're going to show all of that, it's sometimes the intervals actually relate to distance from the medicine on the keyboard to find if you go to an E on the staff. So we're going to look deep into distance and, um, and which is intervals. If so, nobody understands what intervals mean, you just mean the distance um, between notes from one point um, to that point, from how far a note is from, so for example, C, um, how far is D or far, or, or from C, which is a second, or, or C to E, which is a third. And we're gonna just look into those basics. Um, for persons who want to learn to side read, but they're not understand how, it, how to side read, understand the theory behind it. So, um, note values, um, they, they indicate, you know, just like, for example, we have fruit, we have apple, and that's how I see, like, fruit, you know, we have apple, we have a lime, and every one of the notes, they have a value. Different notes versus different value, you know, because they have a different duration of that beat. You know, even rest, you know, even though rest means there's a silent, you say rest means that, excuse me, if rest means they are silent, they still have a value which you have to count in the music. Here we have the whole note and its rest, um, four beats. You have the half note, its rest, uh, the two beats, where two beats, quarter note as um, one beat, and there we have its rest. We have eight notes, 16 notes. And these are the very same things that musicians who play by ear, they play. Because if funny enough, you can, you can hear something played easy, right? You say, oh, this is easy easy and but then when you see on a piece of music you can't play it and that does that that puts up a barrier you know and you have to break that barrier by even focus on as much as you listen to music and how to play it you have to focus even on sight reading as much you know even if you spend like five ten minutes a day it works every day you know, we have the different scales degrees. And whereas if you're in C major, you have a different scale degree from C to C. You know, so a scale is just a sequence of notes, um, usually an octave. Um, we use a CD, you have the C major scale. Each note is assigned a number. One, because we're in C major scale, so C to C, you're playing the octave. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we've got the eight and we can just say the one because it's the same thing, it's a C. So we have different scale degrees and that's what we even hear sometimes. When we hear in music, different scale degree based on of what key we're in. We'll look at the pitch, you know, for even the treble clef. We have the treble clef here, which will tell us, okay, you're playing notes like from middle C and opera using your right hand specifically your right hand unless the music itself tell you um different because some music after music require you to like do some crossover so to help we have acronyms um for the lines we have e g b d f um some people use Ele elephants get big dirty feet some kids use um Every green bus drive fast. Some views are, what is an uh, every good boy deserve favor for the lines. So that acronym helps us to figure out the lines. And in between the lines, definitely is a space and it's worth something as a note. 
a pitch is there which we have f a c e for each space because we have five lines and between those lines you have four uh four spaces f first space second space a third space space c fourth space e look on to the down to the bass clef notes where is the lower register of the, of the keyboard where you are left hand to play uh we have for the line uh, we have g b f a g b d f a um for those who want to use acronyms with it also we have granny baked donut for alice some people use that our people say good boy deserve favor always for elbows to the line for the bass clef and for the the spaces in the bass clef we have a c e g you know what i learned was going up was all cows all cows eat grass look down so another part of the the staff is uh you have the time signature um which is the way the time is, is there so we can organize the beat you know to know the how many beats per bar you know to to give that time you give the tempo so you can have something with time time help organize so just like we have to go work we have a set time to be at work you know if you have if you're have, you playing at a gig, you have a set time to be at the gig. So time is very important in our music. Always you have to know the time, what time you're in. Time in you're in. So everybody know the top number. Oh, uh, sorry, I don't have it right here, but I soon we soon go down to it. The top number represents tells you how many beats are in a measure. You know, everybody know a measure is separated by um, bar lines. So how many beats we are we have in a measure, and the bottom number tell us which note get one beat so based on the bottom number um, it represents a note like for example you say four it represents a quarter note so it telling us each quarter note gets one beat there's a each quarter note that like have here the four four year time signature the, the bottom number represents what beat gets one beat and the four represents a quarter note a quarter note get one beat so therefore on the top note tell you how many beats per bar so therefore we need to have four beats in each bar before we can put a bar line and it can be more than four beats so you know you have your subdivision if you want to use a quarter note because two quarter notes uh, based on this value add up to two eight notes based on its value add up to a quarter note so as long as when you count all the notes in all your value is of is four then you're good to go in that to put the bar line here we have three four which is like three quarter notes uh, in each bar and two four two quarter notes in each bar or you can have even a half note or three say minimum one minimum So let's take a look at the sight reading example. So this note right here is a C. Um, represent middle C. If I look at the treble clef, and this represent middle C. This is a quarter note which has one beat. I have half note, we have two beats. As mentioned in all this everything is in a one bar, so I have to four beats. Four beats on the top number. So one plus one is two plus, this is two beats. Plus. So one plus one plus two, give you the four. Um, so when you're teaching some students, some students will be like, okay, two beats. Clap, clap, half note, one half note for me. They'll be like one, two, you know, you see one note. So therefore that, that one note has two beats. Um, we play that by even play by ear in music mention this you know it's good when you can identify your note values when you're playing them a rhythm is is key otherwise some melody rhythm is key and the, so for that rhythm it is because of the value of the note 
to create a nice you know the redeem you have to know the value of each different types of note values so you know what note is what of what value or type so we have c c and another c so one two three four can we count into four so one two three four and that's why it sounds like not the complicated guys it's just that easy so don't be afraid to attempt learning you know music on a, on a stop don't be afraid so you, you can't be bothered with it because it's too much work um to be honest the average man it might take you take you like about one and a half to about two years it can take you to be a good year and that, that's fine just like maths you know i don't know a lot of matter not a lot of musicians are great at maths um just like maths you have to practice it so it's like so sight reading is something you have to practice because i never usually practice a lot nah i don't practice it at all and if you should practice a lot at all you know and that was a problem now and, and and being here on this island because a lot of people ask me like what is it like here? what is it like here here Cayman is good it's nice you know uh what is it like here uh what is like here is you if you can both play by ear and sight read that's a plus for you let me be honest with you guys it's a plus because i've been on stage and persons like the the band leader look at me and say i see you are playing this song it's just true or or this latin true and just put the sheet right there and say yo we're playing this uh, and I have to look at it and say, okay, first scan it through, you know, to look for, identify what I know, or even identify what I'm not sure of. So my brain can get used to it. My eyes can get used to it. So okay, this occur, occur, occur here, you know, find some, uh, a, a spot of we can reckon with to know, okay, what's about. So if you get a music like this, and you say, you say middle C right here, C, 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 and right, this is your interval come in, is C. And if you, this is up, this is just a step. Just slide on the keyboard here. It's just D. You just move from the line into the, this the space under your D. Then goes up another step, is E. And as I mentioned, I got the lines, it, lines are every, good boy deserve favor all right every green bus drive fast so c d and we have e but guess what i need to know we just need to count it we continue to four one one two three four it's like that so good the good the good the, the tip as mentioned sometimes look at the notes um work on visualizing what it sound like um so like even in rhythm not just pitch in this rhythm so if you know your note value values then you understand what the rhythm should sound like and we have the c e this is our interval which is a skip so i have a skip right here because you move to c to e then we have another skip to G. So info, intervals can be in step, can be on skip or such or say leaps. And it's just the distance between notes. So if you get the eyes accustomed to it, it's fine. Um, I heard this rule that um, somebody mentioned. That's a necessary rule, may I say. Somebody said, some mentioned around me one night that you don't need to look down when you're playing. Or musicians don't look down when they're playing. Nothing other so. What you need to do, they do look down sometimes when you sight read them. Is, but you don't want to bow your head. You know you don't want to look down. You want to just use your eyes to look down. Mm -hmm. Cause sometimes you'll be playing here in the music, and then a piece required to go in higher registers. But you want to ensure your hand is at the right place. So instead of 
looking down like this, you actually just move your eyes. You don't need to shift your just eyes and look down. Get it? So when you when you look back at the piece, you know where you are. Because sometimes with the disadvantage is when we look look down and look up, we're like, where you don't know where you are. You know, it happens to me, and I realize that most uh, international musicians, if I watch classical players, I realize they, 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 they actually, they, their eyes, and even somebody actually told me, a professional classical player here told me, you just need to look down your eyes. You don't need to put your head down. Um, then go through the bass, the bass clef. Uh, in the bass clef right here, we have C, again, because we said for the spaces we have all cows eat grass. But not every every cow eat grass. So we have A and we have C because of our cows. You know, and the line we only bakes donut. So we know so that's that D. And also the right choice is that E. Uh if you continue to do this every day, everything will, 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 will be good for you. Sometimes my this helps me to know where C is and to help to figure out the different interval. Because I know a point I can reckon with which is C, which helps me to figure out all the different interval. So you have C, D, and E. Yeah, so we have all of that. So when you have a point of working it, it helps you. And what happens sometimes what I see you now, so I like it's just dots. Because if I know this is a G, I realize there's a skip down. Definitely it's gonna come at the E. I just dress it in one. And and that's it. It's so when I look right there, I know this is a C. I'm gonna look across and then keep going reading right because we read from left to right, not right to left, read from left to right. Just making it clear out there for don't know that. So, and you reckon with this note right here, so it's a C. So, if you see it again, a C. Um, another way to read music, music, especially for like um, pop or jazz players, sometimes you use the scale degrees, as I mentioned earlier. So, we're playing with a band, and the keys is uh, set, mentioned to the, to the basis six or two. These guys are the scale degrees. You know, based on what key they're in, and lead sheet is another is is another way they use to read notes. So look at it. Somebody tell you to play C. Looking at the C, you play C. You play C, which is the same thing here. So you see how they work and in and is C is same chord right here. C E G. Same, and you go across, you see the same thing. C, second space, third space, fourth space. C. I also play a G chord. That's it, right? G, B, D. And same, same thing. So sometimes in on, on music, lead sheets, for musicians who are interested in learning lead sheets, uh, is another way if you know your chords well, and you will see letters, I see numbers, like whether it's talking about um, sevenths, uh, whether you see evics. Sometimes you might see like C over G or a different way. But this is a, a good start. Who want to learn to le learn lead sheet? A good start by seeing it right here, the letter of the chord right here to tell you what to play. Sometimes we just see a, a, a capital letter, and if you see a capital C, and if it's a small m, it's thinking about the minor because we have the different qualities. Because we have major quality, we have minor quality. But normally, the letter by itself is speaking of the major quality. And take a look at this. A lot of a lot of musicians are very familiar with this. You know, autumn with autumn leaves. And and, and it's a popular, popular piece, you know, one of the standard jazz. And 
as you see, he's in 4 4. Always, you see, in 4 4, I did mention that it, 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 um, it starts on it's in it should be four beats per bar, but oil base is three beats in this bar. Um, I'm sorry, I have the bottom piece of the music cut off. You find out the additional beat that should add up, make it four is there, you know. So, on a cruise, is uh, where it's different. Sometimes music starts on like on the upbeat, and sometimes start really on beat uh, three or beat four, or even beat two, and it's just one of it. Just one of it. Um, when I was mentioning about the different letter names for lead sheet, because we went to identify the different, the note value, the letter name, or the pitch. You know, we went through that, and now we're talking about the the, the lead sheet version. If there's no bass, there's no bass clef for you to hold the chords. So you have these the letter up here, whereas this A, a seven, speaking of A minus seven, we have the key of G. Everybody would know we have the key signature is right there. So you know, a, a key that has only one sharp and it's only G that has one sharp, which is F sharp. So in this music, the only accidental notes to press are key sharp. It should be black key should be F sharp. No matter where you're on the keyboard, F sharp. Unless you might see a natural sign somewhere and it asks you. The F not sharp. We have our A7, E minus 7. So it's actually be A. So all we know what's the seventh note? A, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So it's actually to play these three notes. This is your chord. Um, in instances, or wherever you want, you want to play that is your chord. But you want to play it like this, you want to play it like this. Some people use it like this. Or sometimes, if you're using a bass player, um, persons understand rootless. Sometimes I don't even hold the bass note, I would hold the A. I might just hold the C major while the bass player holds the A because that even completes the chord. As long as he's holding the root, he's complete the chord. Um, we have here D7. So D. Asking for a D chord but seven with seventh note. D chord is D F sharp A seventh note. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And we have it there. And the G with the triangle represent major. It is major, represents that major. So you wanna have that with the triangle. So you have different ways. Sometimes you by the letter. Sometimes you see a triangle um, to represent it. Uh, I'm trying to remember what else they use. But they are like few symbols they use to highlight um, lead sheet with regards to letters and even other symbols. Um, instead of minus right here, sign, they call it, yeah, it represents. Um, Excuse me, it represents the minor, E minor, or you see the F sharp. F sharp, and this actually means half diminish. Because you have F sharp diminish, would that be if it was just the O, like the degree sign, it would be like F sharp diminish, F sharp A, C, D sharp. However, because it starts through it, it will half diminish. It will be F sharp A, C, E. You just move that seven note to go here. And that's the main thing I want to talk to you guys about. So it's very important to understand sight reading much as we use to play by ear because it makes a difference. It makes a lot of difference, especially of the intentions of the of the composer. So yeah, Chris, thank you very much. Great presentation, Sam. All right, bro. We did enjoy that presentation. At this time, we are definitely going to go into our Q&A. So, um, 
I'm going to ask like, the guys now on Zoom to raise their hands and we are going to direct some questions now to, to Kareem. All right, guys, in the, in the chat, now it's time for you to participate in tonight's show. All right, let me see an indication of the, the hands. All right, I, I'm Sam. I, I'm going to break the ice while the guys are getting ready. Uh, while I was in school, um, I noticed that I was given a piece to, to work through for the entire um, term, right? Is that a good way to practice sight reading or should you change the piece every single day? It should. And practicing is not just physical practice, you know. You know, you, you, you can practice by even just by looking at the notes, get familiar with it. You know, spend, so as we mentioned earlier, some, sometimes spend some time away from the instrument itself and practice and, and just look at the music, analyze the music, you know, that help you with the intervals, help you what's coming next, make a big thing on head. Um, it's okay to, 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 to attempt other pieces, but you be careful of your balance because you want structure. Structure is key. You know, you want to ensure you have your whatever your, your objective for a lesson, you have it structured and balance. You can't say, okay, all right, we know someone learned this today. But what what's what's your approach you're gonna take to it? You know, um so you have to be you have to be careful. It's good to spend time. Um, sometimes learning a piece in a Chris, uh, one of my, one of my tutors told me that some encourage it also. You don't need to start from the beginning. You can start learning a, a classical piece, whatever, jazz, whatever, um, pop from even the middle. You can start, say, okay, let's start learning from this. So learn this bar, learn that bar, all right, learn that bar. Uh, learn that bar of music that works too you know there's more than one way you can strategize um how you practice and what you practice all right um any other questions from the the, the zoom platform um andre henry Yeah, man. Yes. Yeah. Karen, what's up, man? Yeah, man. Busy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, man. The place is big, bro. Um. So, thank you for your presentation. Really appreciate it, you know. Um. So, I try to see if we can formulate my question. All right. The thing is that um. I'm not really a big fan of theory. Yeah. But I know the, the purpose of it. So um I want like like steps and procedure, like how to approach it more or what you do to, to make it more interesting. Oh what I do to make it more interesting. All right. Um first you analyze what yes. you don't know yet, what you need to know, which is the basics. You, you look at the basics uh, of identify the notes on the staff. And as I say, you, you, it's, I try to give the best for you, with them. Because I mean, you probably, yeah, you, you, you kind of lose it. I'm not even familiar with it, have some sex. You, you know the notes yeah. on the staff, right? Spend time on it. Just that alone. You want to spend time randomly calling out notes like I do with my students. Take a, take them away from the music sheet, like um, the lines, letter of the lines and the spaces, and say, okay, what is first line? First space, second space. Cry it out in, in, in procession and then stop and then just do it random. So, okay, what is the third space on the. Oh. What's the third space on the treble clef? This is C. All right, cool. What is the second space on the bass clef? It's the same, it's C, you know, and it, but they got them thinking. Yeah, man. 
So sometimes you, yeah. you have to you have, you have to, <laughs> you have to yeah. do it like learn it. Okay, second space, second space, first space. And as a say, exa- I'm a Seventh Day Adventist, you know, use in a lot. So sometimes we'll take up in now, go through it. You know, learn it. Sometimes what you do is if you get a piece, and this is a good idea to do, you write down the notes then. When you work them out, you write them down on, on, on it. So if you see a G, you can write the G, write it on your music sheet. It's fine. Right then, and sometimes what you end up doing, if you yeah. read it, you actually read the letter then instead of the, the note itself, which is fine. But make, ensure that they still know each pitch. If it's on the third line, mm-hmm. the second line, mm-hmm. whatever. You want get that concept in. And just take baby steps. It's just baby steps. Yeah, man. Don't, 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 don't do this for in person. Yeah, definitely. Anybody. You know, and, and you, 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 you elevate yourself, you know. That's the whole thing, you know, about music. You know, elevate. I always want to grow. Because none of them are perfect. I'm not perfect. I'm not, even though I'm the best person to do this, yeah. but because yeah. the knowledge yeah. I have and the interest I've been here on this island, let me realize, yo, Karim, music is not one-sided. We can't say universal, universal, and we just have focus on what we hear, we play it back. But that's fine. What I hear, I can I just play it back. But what if I'm not hearing? What if I just have to see and play it? I am, am I able to deliver that same caliber of standard music just as I'm hearing? So I spend some time, time on that, just sit up on it, you know, in your personal time, and just randomly ask yourself sometime if you even eat or you are sleep in the middle of the night, yes, so- ask yourself some, something in theory. It's not like some high level of dedication. <laughs> yeah, music, I live at dedication and, and, ah. and discipline. Yeah. Discipline is key, you know. Definitely, yeah. yeah you know, and, and there's principles behind. So, just try it out, bro. Not it, not so, it's, it not cause an arm to you, straight. You know, um, let's say this out low to the man. Then it's we we read really yeah, cool, before it so much. Not not do before well. Corey Henry so much. And I realized those guys have idea about theory. When you watch some of his shows and the orchestra have scores of his music, they are given that opportunity to play for a great man like that because of their ability to learn how to read music. So look at it and see where you want to be, where you want to yeah. be, where you want to be. Yes, All right. Bless up, Andre. Yeah, man, you answer a question. You know, just I want to add one more thing. <laughs> so what I did, Karib, is that I put myself out there. So basically teaching level one theory to students and teaching up to level five and six. So it have a, it have forced me now to learn it. Learning. So sometimes you go put yourself in an environment. Put yourself in an environment so you can say, all right, you know, so I have to learn it. Because trust me, self-motivation kind of hard to come by. Just like that, you know. Thanks again, Karim. Yeah, yeah, man. Bless up. All right, Andre. Um, Tajay. Yes, yes, sir. Let's take Tajay Walker. Hear me? Go ahead, Tajay. Um, even um so question to the presenter um my understanding most musicians learn the practical first and just wanted to find out how was it for you when you is it is it was it the same way for you and how did it affect you learning your theory um the practical most people learn the practical first um i to be honest i never learned the, the the practical for actually learning theory, you know, um, if, if, a, if, a, if a musician do learn, actually learn the practical first, though, um, it's not hard 
it might it's not hard to for, for that transition to learn um theory uh it's it's just on you what you want you know it's it's it, it actually give you a more light to what you're doing if you know what i mean if uh -huh. If you do something mentioned earlier, if you play something, we don't know what chord it is. I don't know what note is it on the on the scale or on, on the staff, I should say. It, it gives you more light knowing theory, where you can read not just sight reading, but theory on a whole to know the application and how it makes sense. All right, thanks. So, so if you want to learn it, I you will know, I will encourage everybody to do it. I know some, if people look at it boring, but reality is, you can't say yeah, ex, yeah uh, you want to explain your territory or you know how good you are or where you want to be, if you can't um, know the the basics, understand the basics, you know. So. Take the risk, you know. When you try to learn something new in music, the risk to take the chance to put the effort into. So the same energy is applied to that. Because if you play a regular music, you know, you know, on studio, if you go to Logic and any one of them, the music sheet is there for it. And and you see, and somebody else can play that. So, so yeah, bro. Yeah. Yeah, man. We're gonna take the, the final question. Um from Mr. Delroy White. Hey, what's Peace. going on, everyone? Good evening. Uh, PC, PC, it's me up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're not going to start anything tonight, but anyway. Um, there was something that you said uh, profoundly regarding the discipline part of the um, site reading. Um, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, I, I really um, think it's important. I... Um, when I was young, I didn't really care too much of it, but I understand why. And then because I was raised in the apostolic church, so you know, you have to use the Pentecostal hymnals and so forth. Yeah. Um, playing organ, um, I would concur with that because um, you know, playing the hymns exactly how it's supposed to be played, um, you can tell the difference when someone is reading the score as it is regarding the chordal structure you know, versus someone playing by air. Because that's where, um, you know, some people will just probably switch up the inversions to make it sound like it, but it is not the exact thing. You see what I'm saying? And sometimes that can be that as an illusion to cover up. And I'm not saying, you know, that's not good, you know, whatever, not, but it, it comes with the pros and the cons side of it. Um, and so forth. So as an organ, uh, on an organ approach, yeah. And that's what I have to start when I moved to the States. Um, I have been doing that, like working for, especially I have to say here in the United States, these churches, especially the Baptist churches, you have mm -hmm. to learn to read um, like um, um, this hymn called um, mm, F, um, all things unto thee, O oh Lord. That, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You got to learn all that type of stuff. I'm apostolic, so we don't know that type of something. So, you know, when we come here, I had to um, adjust. And especially playing an organ, you know, you have to play it exactly because they sing it exactly like all the hymns, you know, um, does yeah. it. So, yeah, I, I do, um, I just wanted to um, add with that. With the discipline side, yes. Um, I agree. Um, even though I don't too much like it too much, but hey, I think it's it's pretty much the brace. It's like braces, training, you know, trying to straighten your teeth. If that makes sense. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah, respect. Yes, pitchy. yes, sir. Mm -hmm. All right. Because we're glad somebody actually conquered to come live and say it still. Uh, it's it would affect you. It can break you as musician. If you go to a church and they are singing the correct harmony or the structured harmony in the hymnal and you're playing something else. Because of how music is structured, you're right. you, you have to be careful because if the soprano is playing a certain singing a certain note, but your finger presses something else with a different voicing of the chordal structure in the hymn or the harmony that you're, they are singing change everything one right. 
there's just one no making the quality of your car different. Right. Right. That, and that can break you. Somebody call you out, you know, you know, this person, some person isn't afraid mm -hmm. to call you. You're afraid to call you. I give it an eye there. <laughs> yeah. Know, yeah. So you don't want to get that. Right. <laughs> 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 no, I've seen it happen because I work for Church of God in Christ, and I ain't gonna lie. When they when the when they're doing like the processional hymns, holy, 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 uh, and so forth. And I remember somebody. Um, I was in organ class with Derek Jackson, and they were doing the hymns. And you know, and for some reason, somebody was playing it and they played it incorrectly. And Judy McAllister gave one dirty look. Ooh. Ooh. Because the soprano note, that thing you're talking about, the same chordal structure, they sing it according to the hymn, and he was just playing. A diminished in the wrong place, but he you no, know, he played her diminished but in the wrong voice. Right, and right, she pick right. it up and she pick it up and she she just stop him and she just even look like the look was like what was that? Like what what at you know, um and so forth. So I yeah, it is serious here. Baptist, AME, and and Kojic and express especially Catholic, but we don't talk now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm. All right, all right, then Roy. Uh Harim, I would definitely would like to thank you for stopping by tonight on the network. I, I must say it was quite an informative presentation. Thank you, Sam. Yeah, man, enough respect, man. Enough respect. All right, and I'm going to ask you to, to give a shout out to Michael Zach. Yeah, so. Um, for us. All right. Yeah, definitely respect, man. And thanks, guys. Thanks for listening. Up. You know, um, as I say, I catered mainly for beginners and I and if everybody are not all, because at the end of the day the conversation went in some deep details and yeah, but it's whatever supposed to be said now being said, you know, and respect everybody who gave a listening ear, you know. Big shout out to the platform, the mic, everybody who made this possible. Uh, big old shout out to my wife, you know, it's her birthday and I'm here. So mm. and she gave me an opportunity <laughs> to, to be here. Uh, to you know, share the the knowledge, you know, and wisdom. Uh, respect, give thanks. <laughs>